Happy Agorism Day! Today is the day that anarchists appropriate the federal holiday known as Labor Day. Of course, today there's going to be a lot of government lies, a lot of labor union lies, trying to say that they help pave the way for these great conditions we enjoy environmentally in our workplace. Uh, in terms of eight-hour days, five, or five days, 40-hour work weeks, weekends off, of course, uh, when in fact that came about through the market, not because of labor unions. What labor unions did is they took the credit from what the market was already doing at the time because capitalism creates this kind of competition in terms of trying to retain employees because over uh, turnover rates can be costly. Uh, you improve the environment for them and then thus in return they improve productivity which allows the uh, entrepreneur to lower prices, right? Attract more customers. Things grow from there, uh, prosper. Everyone profits. Now, through that means of competition through capitalism, these enjoyments that we have today through the marketplace are were brought about through capitalism, not through labor unions. Labor unions, all they did is just steal the credit from what the market was already producing. And that they'll say, well, we pushed for... Uh, for child uh, labor laws that you know children don't have to work in the, in the work week. We push for these 40-hour uh, work weeks, weekends up, wrong. What they did is that they codified what was already occurring in the marketplace. They say they pushed for these things, but at the same time, there was no resistance <laughs> against that over what was already occurring again in the marketplace. Uh, again, these people always steal the credit from what the entrepreneurs in the marketplace were already doing. So. That aside, today is agorism day. And the way that I define agorism is the art of not getting caught. Not getting caught by government. And that government will try as much as they can and interfere in your life and rob you of your productivity, of your happiness. And agorism is a way to fight back and not to let them have as much of, or any of that if you can, as, pos as possible, of course. So in the ways that agorism restricts uh, trade, for example, in the past uh, three decades, through a Rupert study report published through Reason.com, the government in the past three decades have pushed so much restrictions on trade that you are 75% poorer because of it. Remember, every license and every permit discriminates against the educated poor from competing. Uh, in terms of fiat currency, that's another tax, right? In terms of taxation, when we're on that subject, you have to work nearly over 100 days just to pay, surrender your property in the name of taxation to government, right? That's one third, that's nearly one third of the entire year, right? Gone, right? Remember, you got to add up everything up, local, city, state, federal, sales tax, imports, tariffs, everything you have bought has been taxed. And these things certainly do add up. So that aside, uh, Agorism then is trying to get government's um, disgusting, monstrous hands and tentacles off of your life as much as possible, right? That's what feeds and grows the state, especially through withholding tax. And that is what allows this uh, plague to continue and, and destroy and, and spread strife in every community. So agorism is the idea of applying the theory that we have of anarchy into the real world and its application. And I'm gonna list five ways that you can achieve that in fighting against the state and fighting against tyranny and liberating your community agoristically. And the first agor strategy you could do right now for liberation is to liberate your mind. And that through government's many monopolization of many services and goods that they have devastated, one area in which they have wrecked so much is the public school system. Reading level today has dropped down all the way to the fifth grade. That's why newspapers have to dumb down their articles and their essays. Uh, this is why public high school graduates from New York cannot still pass literacy tests, over 90% of them. It is ridiculous how much government tries to dump people down. Uh, so in that response, I'm going to introduce five books that I greatly enjoy that I think you guys may enjoy as benefit as well. And the first one will be Anne Rand's The Fountainhead. Yes, Howard Work is a IP terrorist, but it's a great story about of a character, someone who does not compromise their principles for politics. The second will be Notes from Underground. For those who are interested in existentialism or an existentialist crisis, <laughs> that's a great book to go through. Another is uh, Cormac McCarthy's The Road. That's a good fun one on the side, right? You don't have to read all nonfiction. There are some fictional worlds in terms of post-apocalyptic genres that I greatly enjoy. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress would be another one to go along with that. The last one I'm gonna recommend is The Not So Wild Wild West by Terry Henderson. 
in terms of uh, how, how, I guess you could say, Hollywood propagates a lot of myths and lies and how the settlements of the frontier were not actually that violent. There wasn't all these gunslinging deaths that were occurring. There was a lot of market reaction transforming vigilante groups and stopping a lot of violence. And so much that one of the largest uh, top five uh, populated cities, uh, is before government got involved, uh, they only experienced two homicides a year. Right. So a lot of areas in which you can see the lies of uh, Hollywood, you know, it goes hand in hand with government creating this area of uh, the boogeyman that uh, would occur if it were not for government. It's not really uh, accurate or true. And the fifth one that I'm going to introduce is the argument against intellectual property by Stefan Kinsella. That's a great, uh, concise book, uh, great a good uh, introduction in terms of property rights and leading all the way in terms of how ideas and thoughts uh, cannot be justified as an extension of what is real property. And the second strategy you could do right now for liberation is to liberate your body and that the government has done so much to destroy the environment uh, and allowing no property rights in rivers in terms like dominion powering, allowing uh, their waste to go into the James River or look at the Flint, Michigan problem in which they're forcing families to still pay for that poisoned water lest their children be abducted by uh, child protective services, right? Uh, so there's a lot of areas, and you can look at Joe Salatin's work in that terms of the FDA, uh, the, uh, the United States uh, Agriculture Department, just ruining small farmers locally as well. Um, and so whenever the question arises in terms of like, why does meat is uh, so cheap versus uh, the cost of good food so high, uh, meat is heavily subsidized by government. Uh, good healthy food is heavily restricted, heavily regulated by government as well. And so it has to be offset in terms of uh, reflecting uh, those consequences consequences into those costs. So liberate your body. Uh, work three times uh, a week. Go to the gym. Like 20, 30 minutes, you're good to go. Don't do much of any cardio though. You know, lift weights. That's a faster way to burn fat. Uh, and, and feeling healthy and have a lot more uh, activity uh, going on in the long term. You'll feel a lot more energized. You'll feel a lot more healthy. You don't want to be 40, 50 years old, pill popping just to take a shit, for example. So liberate your body. Take care of yourself. This is your vessel, right? This is uh, your, your governing body, as it were. And it is very helpful in terms of fighting back against the state. You want to be very healthy. You want to live as long as possible as you can. And these are choices that you'll be modeling and one day if you want to have children, right? Uh, healthy habits go a long way for you to start uh, modeling that behavior now. And the third agri strategy you can do right now for liberation is to liberate your time. Of course, government will rob from you. They'll try to rob your productivity, your money, your happiness, all these things you can't get back. And so you're trying to take back as much as you can as possible and not surrender to them in many ways that you can get away with. One such way would be when you first, I would say, examine many cities in Europe where they've removed the traffic lights and traffic stop signs, you'll find that traffic congestion went down dramatically. Traffic accidents went down dramatically. People saved time for, on their commute. So what I'm suggesting is if you see a stop sign that you can get away from running through, of course, examine your environment, assess the risk, see if there's no cop, no one coming through, roll right through it. Go through a stoplight if you can, of course. Those are minutes, seconds that add up eventually. Uh, those are that's just your life that the government just stifles, uh, stagnates, and makes you idle and robs from you from further productivity, from your self actualization. You can say right, the pursuit of self interest that they pause and stop you and throw tumbling blocks in front of you. And so I do that all the time. I probably run, I break uh, traffic laws at least 10 times a day. Uh, in terms of uh, seatbelts, I never wear my seatbelt. Um, I wear the seatbelt over my left shoulder so that police extortion is, if they see me, it looks like I'm wearing one, right? But I don't like uh, wearing them. It ruins my time, gets in the way. I like to assess my own risk. Uh, and every time, if I ever have to wear one, you know, I only think about just punching Ralph Nader in the face, right? It's his consumer laws through government pointing us at people, you know, it's for your safety, right? You know, but we're gonna pull you over and fine you. And of course, if you don't pay that fine, we're gonna throw you into a cage in which, of course, if you try to escape, for your safety, we'll murder you. And the fourth agorist strategy you can do for liberation is to liberate your community. You can do this simply by visiting a farmer's market, for example, and of course, that goes with liberating your body, buy some vegetables, tax-free, in turn, sales tax-free, right? I've never seen a market there that has sales tax with their produce and goods. So visit one, and find ways to get your, your food, right? Uh, sales tax free. Uh, I pick up my raw milk from there as well. I'm stopping by tomorrow at Bird Market from 3 
to 6.30 p.m., which is every Tuesday here in Richmond. And that's every week, actually, throughout the entire year through Faith Market. And it's a great deal, great milk, a great way to be involved in the counter-economy, as it were. Uh, another way you can go about in terms of liberating your community is to flash your high beams when you see extortion police uh, nearby, right? While you're driving out there in your commute, of course, if you don't have a Waze app, you can communicate to other drivers and to alert them, hey, uh, there are some trapdoor spiders ready to spring on you uh, up the road. And if you may be saying, well, what if they see you doing that? There was a court ruling not that long ago of a guy who actually was arrested for doing just that, but the judge said this infringes on his freedom of speech, and so he's good to go, not guilty. So yeah, uh, let's bring some of that back. Uh, a third way that you can go about uh, spreading agorism, as it were, is to spread anarchy, right? Uh, into your interpersonal relationships uh, with the people that you care and enjoy the company the most. And just start right there. Remember, the state is nothing more than a group of individual people. And each individual people that you help pull out of the matrix is one that the state can never bring back, right? It's one in which I would imagine their interpersonal relationships as they continue to grow and learn more about this will also unplug themselves from the matrix. And one by one, that's how we grow this movement. And the fifth agri strategy for liberation will be to liberate the market by learning what Bitcoin is all about. Uh, you've seen what's happening in Europe right now. You've seen what happened in Greece in which the government would freeze people's assets and only allow 60 euros to be withdrawn per day or Cyprus where they stole a substantial amount from everyone's savings to pay off their debt. These things will be coming here to the United States eventually. They can only prolong the inevitable through these bailouts. So get smart on where you uh, invest your money, gold, silver, Bitcoin, other areas to getting yourself involved in the market. These things, of course, will overlap with other strategies, such as learning uh, Henry Hazlitt's economics in one lesson to have a good foundational understanding of economics. Or visit Mises.org for other good essays on Austrian economics. So a lot of great empowering ways for you to actualize these theories into the real and to uh, bring it out into the world around you to manipulate your environment and bring out the anarchy that, that you want to see, as it were. So happy agorism day. Remember, agorism is the art of not getting caught, but do not surrender any more than you have to. Do not surrender any second, any hour, any productivity, your happiness, money, a piece of your soul to the government, to the monster that is statism any more than you have to. And with that, I'll see you guys at the Virtue Party and stay liberated. Well...